An independent laboratory has found that benzene, an industrial chemical that the FDA has deemed a carcinogen, exists in high levels in some dry shampoo products. In some cases, over 170 times the amount of the, re of the limit set forth by the FDA. Now, this is an industrial chemical found in a lot of things such as gasoline, cigarettes, cleaning products, and glues, and paint strippers. It is also found in some cosmetic pro products, which um, the industry is not nearly as regulated as pharmaceuticals. Let's talk about it. So this week, Valisure, which is a Connecticut-based industrial chemical testing company, put out a press release saying that they identified 34 different manufacturers of dry shampoo that contain the cancer-causing chemical benzene. Now, this chemical benzene has been shown to produce um, or to be related to leukemia. It can be found in different types of propellants like propane and butane, and it's also been found in things like body sprays and hand sanitizers. Now, the FDA says that the limit that is considered safe for, for testing should not be greater than two parts per million. One of the companies and products had 340 parts per million. Now, Valisher has recommended and written to a, a, a formal request to the FDA to recall these products. Now, that could take up to 180 days, so it's important to get the words out, and who knows whether the FDA will actually do that or not. Now, this is a particular concern with these types of products because products such as dry shampoo are typically done indoors where there's not as much circulation for the, for the chemical to spread out. And often it's sprayed right by a person's face, right? If it's going in their hair, then of course it could be just inches away from where they, where they breathe. And that's with the biggest problem because with benzene, it's the inhaled that is the problem. Now, thankfully, Valashur has published the letter that they sent to the FDA, where it lists every single product that they tested, and they actually have several different tables there, and we put the link down in the description below so you can check on the individual products. And what they have is one of the, li the, the lists. It has all of the products above the, the two parts per million, up including that one that's 340 parts per million. And then they have a second list which shows the ones that are under two parts per million. So it's easy to kind of look for. But in addition, it actually it doesn't just show the list. It actually shows the uh, the actual amount of benzene in each of these products so that they're ranked. So you can even see which has the highest, highest or among even the ones that are under the two parts per million. You can see there which of those products actually have the lowest amounts overall. So you'll find that PDF link down in the description. Now, interestingly, I had actually never heard of dry shampoo until a few weeks ago when my wife, who in recovering for surgery and she was not able to take a shower, so she wanted to do a dry shampoo. Now, this was actually before this report came out, so we went ahead and did it. Um, and thankfully, now that I have the list, I did look, and the product that she used was actually on the safe list and had only 0 0.47 parts per million in this product. And it was actually in the bottom 10 of all of the products. It was something recommended to her from her from a hairstylist, and so thankfully, we got the right information. Probably wouldn't have been so bad because when we did it a couple of times, I know people are using these products long term as opposed to when they don't take a shower. So that's an issue. Now, for those who don't know, the Environmental Working Group, which are the same people who put together the Dirty Dozen Clean 15 list for fruits and vegetables relative to the amount of pesticides, they also have a list called Skin Deep. You can find it Googling it very easily. And what this does, what they do there, is they are looking at all of the different cosmetic products out there, anything for hair, nails, skin, etc. And they have a ranking of, z of 1 to 10 in terms of safety for all of the different types of issues that these products could have of chemicals, not just this benzene. And they even have what's called a um, skin deep verification. So if you hit the verified um, level, that means there's absolutely no concerns whatsoever. And they have very strict, um, st strict regimens there as to what they are allowing for. So that's really nice that they're able to do that. Now, over 15 years ago, in a somewhat similar situation, I started finding high levels of a heavy metal called antimony um, in several of my patients who had never checked, um, had never found this before. We had been doing heavy metal testing, looking for things like mercury and lead, and we were doing chelation. And all of a sudden, these this antimony started appearing. And it was really 
unusual, had never heard that this being a problem before. So I started looking at the products that they were taking. And there was one common product, which was a liquid zinc product. I contacted the manufacturer, let them know what was going on. They went back and checked the zinc product. There was no antimony in it. But then they looked at the inert ingredients and discovered it was in the stevia. Now, because of this company's concern, they decided to really start digging more into this. And they created a, pro a company called a, 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 a separate company called Purity, which is another chemical analytical company where they can check for all of the different types of toxins that are out there. And what they did first is they checked the stevia products that were on the on the shelves of the of the eleven major manufacturers across the country. Seven of them had the antimony in it. So we discovered this, notified the patients, got them off that product. The company did remove the antimony and started checking every batch going forward to make sure that this wasn't the problem. And we did see the antimony levels go down. Why am I telling you the story? This was something that you did not hear about in the news, of course, but more importantly, it wasn't something people were thinking about. Thank goodness I was able to find it and that the company was responsible in checking for it. And of course, now we it's something to know that we check for it overall. But that's when I started insisting on companies providing a certificate of analysis or a COA. And what this does is this is a third party um, testing where they are publishing the actual purity of all of the products that they're checking for all of these. And in all honesty, any product that you're putting into your body or onto your skin, you may want to check with the manufacturers to see, are they, cre are they actually doing a certificate analysis with third-party independent testing? And are they publishing it? Are they willing to share it with you? That's clearly something that I've been doing with a lot of the products, most of the products that I've been recommending to my patients because we can't just let this happen again. So overall, for those who do need to use dry shampoos, there are actually plant-based products that wouldn't have any benzene in it. You can find those online. But overall, what's the biggest point? Buyer beware and do your own research. So thanks for listening. Again, please share this information. I have a feeling most people aren't going to hear about it, so please share it with others. And of course, please join us on our various social media platforms. Subscribe here and hit us up on our Patreon account, where if you become a member, you can have access to all of our holistic protocols that we are posting to share um, that are normally reserved for my patients. Thanks and have a great day.